Mighties, welcome to the video. <laughs> it's that time of the year again and Uncle Intel just gave us a bunch of new CPUs. You know what that means? Brand new motherboards like this one, the ROG Strix Z890F Gaming. One of the new ATX form factor boards from ASUS featuring the all new LG A1851 socket. 4 RAM slots supporting up to 192 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and a bunch more. My name is Stefan, let's dig into it. Looks wise, it's a pretty clean looking board with a lot of very nice reflective details that give this board some character and a super beefy heatsink that looks quite nice. This top section above the IO ports kind of looks like a screen at first, but sadly it's not. It's what they call polymo lighting which basically has a bunch of etched surface layers and a bunch of LEDs behind that that you can control. It still looks fantastic, but only the color is customizable, not really the picture, which in my opinion is a big missed opportunity for ASUS, but anyways. This board has one of the coolest SSD heatsink designs I've seen in a while. Covering the PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD slot, it's super easy to access with no tools at all. You basically flip this lever down and it pops off completely toolless. And we know how important completely toolless has gotten. I ain't working with no tools in my PC case no more. The only tool inside of my PC case is this guy. <laughs> <laughs> There are actually five slots in total with the other four PCIe Gen 4 NVMe slots hidden underneath these heat sinks, which you will need a screwdriver to access, unfortunately. A nice touch is that ASUS printed the details of the slots on the boards itself, so you can easily tell where to put what. It's honestly a good use of space they gained by removing almost all of the unnecessary PCIe slots. I mean, in all honesty, a lot of them have been hidden behind our graphics cards and we just didn't use them. They're not aesthetic and everything that we used to use them for is now built in. You don't need those ugly Wi-Fi cards anymore because this has Wi-Fi 7 out of the box. Sound cards are basically obsolete. I mean, this thing has Dolby Atmos support built in, which is more than good enough for most people. But if you are a streamer and you need a capture card or need a high-end sound card for studio work, then don't worry. Asus did leave us with two PCIe x16 slots. The top one is reinforced, and that's obviously for the GPU, but the bottom one is far enough out of the way that you can safely plug in whatever you need without worrying about GPU clearance. Another feature I really appreciate about this board is the troubleshooting. It's something you don't really think about until you need to think about it. From the simple things like the boot face LEDs and the power button on the board for quick testing to the BIOS flashback button and get this, a clear CMOS button on the back of the board. Now while we're back here, let's take a quick look at the ports. You get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, six 10 gigabytes per second USB ports, two of which are Type-C, four gigabytes per second USB-A ports and two USB 2.0 ports for things like your mouse and keyboards. You also get an HDMI and display port up here and at the bottom, you get your internet connections. You know, your Wi-Fi 7 antenna, the 2.5G ethernet port, and lastly, some audio ports. Now for the bad part, because yes, there are bad parts to every single piece of tech out there. Like in all my previous videos, I did do a taste test and I can't recommend, like the soldering is really sharp and it just doesn't taste great. Overall rated a one out of 10. <laughs> Anyways, um, I didn't come across any major issues during my time with this board. There are a few things here and there, some flaws. Firstly, I had a bit of trouble getting my GPU to fit nicely. It needed a bit more force than I would have liked to give. Another thing is the RAM slot design. Granted, this might just be a personal preference, but I'm not a fan of the one side fixed design. It always feels like I'm going to break it as I try and pry and get it in there. That's just me. It could be just me. I think the stickers and the key rings that comes included in the box mostly makes up for all of this. It's not the flashiest board on the market. It does look fantastic though. It has all the USB ports and SSD ports your heart could desire. Overall, I rate this board, yes, I'd give it an eight and a half, 8.7 out of 10. My opinion, this was Stefan from Video Tech. I hope you have fun building your brand new PC. If you need some help, watch this video. This is a great video to watch. See you in the next one. Please remember to subscribe. Cheers, bye.